Hey everyone, sorry about being MIA for so long. The last few weeks have been a little hectic for me. Uh, as you can see, I'm in a new location now. I'm, uh, I'm living in the front room of a house. Um, so a little bit different than what I was doing before. Uh, hopefully the noise of passing cars on the highway here is not too bad. We're going to try to make the most out of it that we can. And today we're going to talk about the Dell Inspiron 113162 running uh, Lubuntu is what I put on it. It's a version of Linux that is based off of Ubuntu. Uh, so we're going to take a look at that uh, in my review using the laptop using uh, Windows 10. Things were a little lacking in the performance department. Uh, so I'm going to, you know, try to see how this compares. We're going to make some comparisons. You know, there's not everything in the Linux land is perfect and great, but it's got its good points as well. So well, let's talk about that. A lot of this video is going to be a comparison of Windows to Lubuntu uh, performance comparisons here. Uh, to be honest, it seemed like in my day-to-day -day usage that Lubuntu performed better, especially in Chrome as opposed to Edge, although Chrome on Windows 10 did perform better than Edge did in my experience. I think Windows just isn't really designed with all of its back-end processes to run on a CPU of this kind with uh, 2 gigs of RAM. I think Lubuntu is a much better option for that. It certainly felt a lot snappier and much more responsive. So take that for what you will, although there is certainly better driver support on Windows. So if you want to, I guess, do more with a different kind of variety of hardware, uh, Windows still might be the better option for you. Being that there isn't a crystal disk mark for Linux, I ran the built-in Lubuntu benchmarking utility. I tried to get these as close together as I could, both writing three gebibytes of files or 3,000 mebibytes, which in Linux I had to do three 1,000 mebibyte writes, so to try to get an idea. Uh, the average um, read rate on the internal storage for Windows was 160.2 megabits a second or megabytes a second. Uh, for Linux here it was 162.5. So ever so slightly better performance on Linux but you're not going to actually notice that difference. Uh, write speeds were very similar as well. For the micro SD card it was more of the same where the read speeds were pretty close to being identical and the write speeds were a little bit different. In Windows it was 25.38 megabytes a second versus 22.5 megabytes per second on the read speed for Linux. Uh, in the write speeds, Windows did 13.28 megabytes a second where Linux was 10.1. So Windows does about three and a quarter megabytes a second faster, which might make some difference on smaller files, but if you transfer really big files, I still think it's going to take a long time either way, and in the real world you just won't notice much of a difference. In reviewing both Windows and Linux, I have determined that the micro SD card is not running on the same bus as the USB system is. Uh, micro SD performance is significantly worse than even USB 2.0. In Windows, we got just a hair under 38 megabytes per second on read, and Ubuntu got 39.6 megabytes per second. So we actually have faster read speeds in Linux for once so far in this benchmarking. Uh, when it comes to write speeds, however, we're looking at a significant difference. Not between Linux and Windows so much, but just between USB read and write speeds in general. This, the numbers were the same both ways, that the write speed seems to be a, about a fourth the difference of the read speeds which I guess never really stuck out of my mind because I never really made the effort to benchmark them before doing this project. In USB 3 you see more of the same which is where the write speeds are slower than the read speeds for both Windows and Linux although with USB 3 the disparity is much less. For the read speeds for example Windows on the sequential has 100.1 megabytes a second while Linux has 91.2 megabytes per second. On the right side, Windows sequential is 70.25 megabytes a second, while Linux is 65.6. So Windows still edges out in terms of probably just driver support, so getting a little bit better performance. But USB 3.0 is significantly faster all the way around, so I don't think it's going to hurt you either way. It wouldn't bother me using it in the real world scenario. 
One area I am going to point out in, up to this point that we've been looking at benchmarks for Linux and Windows and the comparison thereof. But I said earlier in the video that the performance in Linux seems better and that's because it does. This thing, same computer, same battery, not even a month old, so I haven't burned out the battery or anything like that. I'm not twisting the numbers around. On Windows, get six hours and 41 minutes of what I call normalized usage. Now that's just where I'm watching YouTube videos or, or watching videos off the hard drive, checking my email, whatever would constitute a normal day of usage on a laptop for me. Windows is six hours, 41 minutes. Doing the exact same thing on Linux, I got eight hours and 52 minutes. Another two hours and 11 minutes of magical battery life came out of nowhere just because I used a different operating system. I don't know what Linux does that much differently from Windows. I think it's just a lot of the background services on Windows just much must be much greater than that of Lubuntu. I mean, with Windows 10 doing things like reporting a lot with cloud services and checking in with OneDrive and other Microsoft services, I assume it's got to be using more CPU power to do that, which would mean it uses more battery power. So that's that's what I got to say about that. I mean, battery life alone is just remarkably different. Uh, I will say also that for YouTube, watching high definition video is way better on Lubuntu. I mean, significantly so. Uh, there's whole times where for many seconds on end, like 15, 20 seconds, Windows would just freeze up, but the audio would keep playing. So it still had a stream, it just wasn't able to display it for whatever reason. That almost never happened on Lubuntu. I mean, on occasion that's gonna happen with any operating system. I have a high powered Alienware computer and I have a Mac and the same thing happens. So I know that you're gonna get some drop frames always. There's pretty much no way to stop that. Nothing's perfect. Um, but the the difference was just stark in the, just the normal usage of the system. I guess that just comes down to Windows using less resources than Lubuntu does. So Lubuntu can more smoothly play back video from the internet. I, I also will say that whatever codecs Linux is using for watching videos is, it just sips battery power. I mean, very, very little. I watched an entire Canadian football game. Uh, it, was the, it was the first game of the season, actually. I had uh, downloaded the video to, my, uh, to this running Linux, and uh, I think the battery power went down by like 20% at the end of a little more than two and a half hour game. So it, it was really impressive. I was able to use my laptop all the way back home. I just watched football games all the way home. Uh, flying back from Austin, Texas uh, a few weeks ago um, was at RTX and July 4th. So if any of y'all were there, uh, maybe I saw you, maybe I didn't. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so just in terms of just real world performance, it's, it's Linux is just, it's just better. I mean, <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. Um, I will say this much for it though, uh, audio editing with Audacity is no different on Linux than it is on Windows. It's exactly the same. Uh, exporting about a 30 minute audio file from Audacity to from a WAV into an MP3 took about four minutes on both versions of the operating system, uh, both Windows and Linux that is. So no real difference there. I will say where there's two areas that really, really, really bugged me uh, really bugged me <laughs> on Linux is that there is a, there's no horizontal uh, multi-gesture on Linux that I could find. I downloaded every optional driver for touchpads that I could, um, but sliding left and right with two fingers was just never a reality, or any number of fingers for that matter. So it, it, that is what that is, I guess. This annoys the elephant crap out of me because I type and the bottom of my palms, like right here, will tap the touchpad. So I just tap all over the screen and it's, it's, it's very annoying. I couldn't find a way to turn that off. I ran command line tools. I tried to modify the startup to turn off the tap to click feature. None of that seemed to have worked at all. I, uh, there's also something else that I just forgot until just now. Um, Plugging in headphones into the headphone jack does not turn off the actual speakers of the laptop itself. So the two little speakers beneath the LCD screen, those don't turn off. So on a noisy plane, that doesn't really make too much of a difference if you've got your headphones stuck in your ears. But if you're sitting in an airport or a coffee shop, something like that, that can be really bothersome in a very short amount of time. So just some things to take note of. Um, 
but that's it. I mean, Linux runs pretty well on this system. Uh, Dell has good hardware support, or Linux rather, has good hardware support for the stuff that Dell puts in their systems. I, I don't really know that Dell has any drivers available to the general public. Uh, I know that they make that available in their enterprise environments uh, for individual workstations, something like this, which is strictly a consumer product and is only supported using Windows. You're going to have a hard time finding drivers from Dell. That does not mean you cannot go out into the open source community. Uh, Linux has a very, very big community. Uh, Ten years ago when I got into selling computers, Linux was a whole different world uh, than it is now. I mean, driver support has come so far in such a very short amount of time. So keep that in mind. Things are always getting better as well. So in six months, this all might be different. There might be a new version of Ubuntu that has better support, or maybe somebody will just kind of come out with some better drivers and we can turn off the touchpad and get these speakers to work with the headphones the way we would like. Um, so that's it as far as performance goes. All right, so that's it. That's my review of the Dell Inspiron 11 3162 using Ubuntu or Lubuntu rather, I thought about going and putting Ubuntu on it just to test it out and see what it's like. Maybe I can get the touchpad to turn off. Uh, that would be nice, but we'll, we'll see. I have also thought about doing, um, since there's a newer version of Phoenix OS out, I've thought about getting Phoenix OS and putting it on here, which is just an x86 version of Android. That is, it's a version of Android that doesn't run on ARM processors. It runs on Intel's x86 code base. So, I've given that some thought. Uh, I did that once with this when I first got it, um, and it was really, really not good at all. So hopefully things have gotten better. Uh, I have not been able to get EverReady uh, or Cloud Ready to work. It is a Chromium OS uh, that claims do have some installation support for this, but I could never get the installer to show up. It'll boot to the flash drive, but it's just a black screen and nothing else. So I'm still looking into that. So maybe I'll do reviews for both uh, the Phoenix OS and for the cloud-ready Chromium OS here in the near future with this if I can get them working the way I want. And uh, that's it. So stick around. I have also, before I forget, I have also ordered a Yumi Super. It's kind of a newer version of the Yumi Touch that I reviewed a couple months ago. And uh, it's running off of the MediaTek Helio P10 CPU and has the Mali... Uh, T860 graphics as opposed to the Touch's T720. So hopefully we get some better gaming performance. Uh, hopefully the fingerprint reader is going to work a little bit better on the Yumi Super, but it has USB-C uh, that has the type uh, C connector, which is reversible. So I'm excited to try that out and see what it's going to be like. So stick around for that. That's not going to come in until the very end of July, however, uh, because you know shipping from China is not expedient in any way. So we will uh, we'll see what happens there. Hopefully, I will get it before August 9th, uh, sometime between July 27th and August 9th. So stick around. Um, maybe I will throw Phoenix OS on here, and we'll give that a shot and see what its performance is like. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching, and have yourselves a great day.